Now, for more on the situation in Malawi and Africa's disturbing disease burden, I am now being joined by, uh, from Abuja by consultant family physician, Dr. Agbo Ebuta. Good to have you join us, Dr. Ebuta. Good afternoon. Thanks for having me. Welcome, Nigerians. So just beyond Malawi, um, Nigeria also expressed a cholera outbreak. And we seem to be seeing a surge in cholera outbreaks around the world. Why is that? Well, part of the reason is that there continues to be cholera and demicity in all, in most of uh, these disadvantaged countries, low and middle income uh, countries, and like most of African countries, where uh, public sanitation is at its lowest. For example, open defecation is at its highest in anywhere in the world is is in Africa. And open defecation means that there's indiscriminate deposit of fecal matter. And cholera is found in fecal matter. And in fact, suffice you to say that anybody who has cholera has eaten food or drank water that is contaminated with feces. So to a large extent, it has to do with a complete breakdown of partial or complete breakdown of social welfare intervention that guarantee optimal disposal of feces and access to clean, safe, and hygienic water. Apart from other social support uh, practices like hand washing, hygiene, and all, and all of that. Mm. And on, unlike, the, the, unlike the coronavirus, there is nothing novel about cholera. Um, we've had to deal Absolutely. with cholera over and over again. But why, why do we still have significant gaps in, in terms of the response to the outbreak? We, we have significant gaps because we are underdeveloped society and our indices and our interventions remain archaic and uh, to a large extent, uh, governance has failed to respond adequately. In responding more in-depthly and comprehensively to why Africa continues to fail, is because we, have, we could use the health system approach where we look at the finance model. What's the finance model in Africa? Most African countries, payment for health services is still out of pocket. In Nigeria, that payment for health services is what? 70% or thereabout. Means 70% of Nigerian patients will pay from their pocket. And this is is unacceptable. As a, I mean, you need to have national health insurance programs across the continent that has strengthened. In the case of Nigeria, the, the recent act, the National Health Insurance Authority Act, that was signed this year by the president, to a large extent, if it is deployed adequately, will address some of these problems. In Nigeria, we have 30,000 primary health care centers on paper, but only 20,000, 20% 20 of that are functional. So we probably have six to 10,000 uh, primary health centers that are functional. So we need to be able to activate these 30,000 uh, primary health care centers so that primary health care, which is where most patients with cholera will present, is activated. Apart from the financing model, which we need to strengthen, we also need to look at human resource. At a time when the human resource global market is experiencing a lot of competition and challenges with supply, with the migrations of health workers from uh, countries uh, in third world countries to Western countries, like we've seen in Nigeria, a drop of doctor supply from about 35,000 to 24,000 in recent quotes. It is definite that we need to look at strategies to increase the number of human resource availability. It means that we need to train more people. That is only this, that's another sustainable measure. I, I, that is fit, and that I, would I, I just, I want to take it from there. Content. Because you're raising, yes. in, in terms of training more people, uh, you know, yes. I don't think it's just Nigeria alone. I think, I, th I don't have the data, but Absolutely. I think that we've had, we had a, a, a um, we, we're losing a lot of doctors who are leaving Nigeria, the country. Nigeria, Ghana, Kenya, Absolutely. Uganda. They are all and and this, yes. is a, this is a continent, Dr. Ebuta, that is recovering from, I'm not sure we've recovered, or even if our health, health sector has recovered from the COVID-19 um, virus. But now we're dealing with monkeypox, we're dealing with Lassa fever yes. and then Ebola virus as well. Absolutely. How, how bad is Absolutely. this for us as a continent? I think I think it's really, really serious and it's really, really bad. I, I mean, it will get to a situation, the re doctor ratio, uh, doctor patient ratio continues to increase astronomically. I mean, I'm personally worried that if I don't feel too fine, uh, who is going to attend to me? I mean, Abuja, the ratio here is very high. But if you go to some states in Nigeria, that ratio is, uh, is even uh, un unacceptably much higher. 
So we need to strengthen human resource capacity. We need to start stemming the tide of my immigration. And then we need to start building quickly. Every state has to be able to increase the number of supply they make to the central pool. Community health extension workers, nurses, pharmacists, and doctors using clear strategy. Apart from that, for the doctors and the other health workers who are available, we need to train them and retrain them. We need to deploy social media technology to increase their capacity for response, identification of patients who have cholera. We also need to strengthen our, our health information system. Our health information system is structured in a very archaic way so that data collection remains a, a very difficult thing. But with uh, technology, social media, and all of that, we should be able to build a robust electronic medical record system that will allow easy collection of health data so that we can identify epidemic spikes and epidemics, progress to, to pandemics early enough and escalate this through the proper reporting channel, which is through the disease notification officer in the health center, in the local government, to the state, to the federal ministry, and then to the WHO for international intervention as necessary. Right. But more specifically for cholera, every patient that has cholera is likely or symptomatic cholera is likely to lose fluids in significant quantities. So we need to ensure that there's a logistic arrangement, efficient mm. logistic arrangement that deploys simple technology like oral rehydration solutions, IV fluids, and antibiotics to every nook and cranny in Nigeria as at when needed. Because any delay in the supply of this simple technology means that people will die. Uh, in addition to that, we also need to set up what we call clear leadership and governance in healthcare sector, absolutely. which ensures that community engagement, I, I, I multi-sectoral intervention, on, on like resources, agric, and everybody is on. on. So there needs to be a significant right, education. Mr. We need to I'm afraid I have to jump students. in because of time. Thank you so much for your, your, yeah. your thoughts on these it's issues, and I'm sure we'll continue to have this conversation with you as, as these cases progress. Um, Consultant family physician, to. Dr. Agbo Ebuta, thank you. Thank you.